Hi, I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. Some of our customers have requested that I do some projects using tattered lace, so today we're going to do the tattered lace never ending card die. This is the never ending card set from Hunk, or excuse me, from Tattered Lace. Um, this is a big, generous die set. It has a total of 21 dies, and you can see that many of these pieces will be very useful for card projects outside of making this card set. So when you look at the price of the set, bear in mind that you can use these pieces interchangeably on some of your other projects. We have an instruction panel on the inside. It's a little sketchy, but we're going to clear that up for you today. And we'll actually do the project here together. Here's our dies. They're all attached with tape inside, so pull them up carefully because you don't want to damage your projects by damaging your dies. Well, we've got some beautiful pieces here. Look at these wonderful card embellishments, some gorgeous corners, some little boxes. We've got a handmade label, buttons, flowers, all kinds of things that you can use on various projects. Let's go ahead and take a look at our finished project first. This is the never-ending card that we're going to be creating. Now, do you remember those cards we played with when we were kids that you just keep opening? I open it this way, I see hello friend. I open it this way for beautiful patterns. I open it this way, and I've got these lovely patterns. Open it this way, and I'm back to just a note. And it just keeps going. This is really quite a lot of fun to play with. It takes a little self-discipline to put it down because it's really fun. And this is what we're going to be making. Looks complicated? Not too bad. Let's take a look at how we do it. In addition to my die, I'm going to be using lightweight cardstock. This is about a 65 pound cardstock. It'd be great with an 80. I'd be a little reluctant to try it with Adorable Scorable because um, I think that just might be too heavy to, to get the job done. Does the cardstock need to be double sided? Good point, Bryce. The cardstock should be double sided because you're going to be seeing that from, from both sides. In addition, I'll be using two kinds of stickers. I'm using um, round jewel dazzles, and these happen to be teal to match the color of paper. And I'm using the black tiny words and phrases. I'll use two kinds of tape. I'll use my purple low tack tape for taping my dies in my paper when they run through the machine. I'm using red liner tape, also known as ultra tape or super tape and I'm using my detailed scissors. That's all we need to do to get this, this job done. Okay, we've taken our 12 by 12 cardstock, cut it in half. We have a 6 by 12 inch piece. Um, I've put my two larger tattered lace dies, my base dies down, and you'll notice that I taped those in place. Anytime you are using more than one die in a machine, please, please tape your dies down so that you don't ruin them by having your dies overlap in the machine. I'm going to add a shim to my machine. And I'm going to run it right through my spelt lighter teal here. People ask me all the time about what machines I prefer. And I have several. I have a cuddle bug machine. I have the tattered lace machine. I have um, a Gemini. This tattered lace, or excuse me, this, don't worry about that cracking, that's a normal sound as it goes through the machine. Um, this Spellbinder Teal machine is probably my go-to machine that I use the most often. I'm familiar with it, it runs easily, it's a workhorse, it cuts about everything, so it's probably, for a cost-effective manual machine, it's probably one of my favorites. Okay, take out our shim, our dies, we have a nice clean cut, and we have our two major pieces that we're going to be using here. Put these off to the side for now. And I have these two pieces of card. You can see that, hopefully you can see, 
that these pieces are scored. I'm going to go ahead and fold along the score lines. I actually don't want to take them apart quite yet. We will be taking them apart, but I just want to get some score, get my score lines lined up just a little bit. Like some of our other cards, I'm kind of scoring in both directions to loosen up that paper a little bit. Okay, next I am going to put my two pieces of paper together here. I'm going to take the one that has the smaller squares, and you can kind of see my little fold lines there. I'm going to take the one that has the smaller squares, and I'm going to put some tape in the corners. So we'll just cut her tape in about one inch pieces. Now we all know I'm infamous for having a hard time peeling super tape, so we're going to go off camera for just a minute here while I get this ready to go and we'll be right back. Okay, I've put two pieces of tape in each of the corners of the piece that has the folds here. And then I've positioned my other one next to it here. And this is the one that has less folds. And I'm positioning it so that my line here is horizontal. My line here is vertical. I'm going to go ahead and pick this tape off and we'll be right back. Okay, can't see them quite as well now, but my glue strips are, or my tape strips are in my corners. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to line this up against my other square. This line on this sheet is running vertically. The line on the sheet that I'm going against is horizontal. I'm going to press my tape in. And now I have these little nibs here that are holding these pieces together. I'm just going to break those little nibs on the sides. Flip it over and I'll break the nibs on the other side. One in the center that I already broke on my other sheet. Oops. I just cut that. Okay, and now I should be able to open. You saw, you may have seen what I did. I actually snagged this a little bit here, but that's not going to matter once I decorate, so it's going to be okay. And I'm just going through the folds one time, just kind of creasing my folds in. You can see why pre scoring this was a good idea. When it gets like this, it's still right. Fold, 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 and we have our card base. Isn't that fun? Now we're just going to decorate it. Okay, I've popped my dies out of my packaging and I'm just lining them all up here on my paper. I forgot my supplies list to include that I use two colors of cardstock. I happen to use black so we'd have lots of definition for our project. You could certainly use Miri and other things too make it bright and colorful and beautiful. I just went with the black cardstock. And you can see that I'm taping all my dies in place. I'm going to probably want to make two sets of these. It actually, since that card folds over and over, it actually takes a couple of passes through with all these dies to get enough embellishment pieces to do everything. But I just don't want anything at all to move in my machine while I'm cutting because I don't want to ruin my dies. There we go. 
I most certainly will want to show this because I have lots and lots of detail pieces there. So put my shim paper down, the base plate back on. Is your shim paper something special? No, I'm using a piece of adorable squirrel that fell on the floor and got dirty on the back. And so I'm just using a piece of adorable squirrel. It makes a nice shim because it's such heavy paper. It's a tight fit with all those dies in here, so give your arm a good workout. I'd like to go through almost to the end and then back up, come back. detailed dies you can anticipate you're going to want to run them a couple times and you want to check them and there may be a few of those dies I want to run yet again doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the dies or your machine just means they're highly detailed pieces and we have a lot of them in the machine at one time okay Let's see how I did. The base plate. And let's do this. I'll turn everything over so we can see how it's cutting. And it looks to me like we got some pretty good cuts here. I've got my dies taped down here again. I wanted to point out just a couple things. Those ones that didn't cut completely, I'm moving those over to the side because they in these wider machines. The two sides have the rollers and that's where they get the most pressure. So we'll make sure we get those cut cleanly. And I made sure I put my, my uh, square near the side here so I get that same action going for me. Of course, I have everything taped down. I just noticed that one of my dies actually is overlapping. I don't want that. So I'm going to fix that real quick here. Because you do not want your dies to overlap in your machine. If you do that, you'd be buying new dies because you, your machine will actually use one die to cut into the other one. And it won't cut clear through, but it'll be enough to destroy your die. So everything looks good there. Um, another question people ask me sometimes. Thank you. Another question. Now's the fun part. Let's start decorating. I, you know, you can see that I made lots of images. I just like to have lots of choices. So I'm going to use my fine line glue here. And when I glue these, I'm just going to put little dabs of glue in some of the critical areas, right towards the center and then around the edge. It doesn't take a lot to hold these nicely, but I do like to kind of hit the critical areas. These little glue bottles are available in the store. Lots of people ask, what are you putting in it? I happen to have put um, Cosmic Shimmer glue in this one. I like Cosmic Shimmer and I like Tattered Lace glue. Those are kind of my favorites. I think I've mentioned before that we get those great big 120 milliliter bottles of Cosmic Shimmer glue and inevitably one or more of them gets damaged in shipping and it won't sell those so I end up with all these big glue bottles with the tips bent on them and I was looking for a solution to what to do about that when I came upon these little glue bottles and they are just fabulous. They sell for two dollars in our store so you can get them very very reasonably. Let's see, I like the way I started with just a note on the outside of my other one so I think I'll do that here too. A little just a note on the outside. I can put my other greetings as you open the card. 
not going to worry about the fact I got a little glue on the face there. It's going to dry clear, so it's not an issue. And find my little just a note here, or just because will work just as well. Sometimes with these little tiny stickers, you have to weed them out a little bit. You have little tiny pieces that get in the way of being able to clearly read the lettering. I like to take those out. Okay, I have a corner of that. I like the way that looks with the lettering in between there. That was Bryce's idea. I like that, honey. these glued edges set just a little bit before I flip this. I'm going to go ahead and put some jewel dazzles in the center and add a little extra sparkle. I really, really like the dazzles on there because it just makes everything look extra special. Okay. So I'll just pop a few of these in. Put one in the center of this one. Put one in the center of this one. It's kind of match. I just lost it. Uh -huh. Oh, it's clear over there. <laughs> there we go. One more here, and I think this piece is done. Everything's all nice and glued down. I'm going to flip it to the next surface and we have a whole other page to decorate. I'm going to do this one off camera and we'll come back and show you what we did. Okay, back to where we were here. We just started decorating and just know in advance that because we're turning this every which direction, your words are going to be cattywampus, so we'll be turning every direction, but that's okay. We started with just because. Inside we said happy thoughts and thinking of you with a few extra panels and our pretty little stickers in the centers of our flowers. Next we said simple joys, hello and blessings. And finally I said all my love from Debbie. And then we switch it back and we're back at the beginning. This thing is totally addictive. You just want to play with it because you can. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to make for you. I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in getting our newsletter with the supply list that we used on our videos, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. You can find that at www.simplyspecialcrafts.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page and there's a newsletter sign up. And we'll see you next time.